Hey guys, Mr. Bowers here. Uh, today we're going to learn a little bit about thermochemistry. Sorry I could not be there today, um, but I can teach through technology nonetheless. So uh, right here we have a heating plate and on top of it we have a beaker of ice water. Uh, what we're going to be looking at today is how does heat energy transfer from one thing to another and we're going to be creating a heating curve to kind of show what that looks like uh, graphically. So as I look at a cup of ice water, uh, I got a little thermometer here. Uh, the temperature of it is actually zero degrees Celsius. And as you warm it up, as long as ice still remains in there, the temperature remains at zero degrees Celsius. It's a pretty interesting phenomenon. Um, and as I leave this on, it will heat up and heat up and heat up. And eventually the water will do what? Right, it's going to boil, right? So uh, what temperature does water boil at in degrees Celsius? Good, all right, so um, we're going to go ahead and look at what that looks like uh, graphically. So let me just get this out of the way real quick. I want to let this kind of do its thing off to the side. So it'll be heating up slowly as time progresses. Uh, so what we have in front of us is a big piece of graph paper that you, uh, the sub should have given you today. And on the back side of it is actually our homework that you're gonna be doing as just a, a follow-up to this uh, video. All right, so if you don't have colors yet, pause the video, go ahead and grab some colors back uh, by the window or borrow some from your neighbor. And let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so what a heating curve looks like. Go ahead and title this thing, heating curve. What a heating curve looks like is it goes through the phase changes of things. So I'm just gonna keep this very basic and call this time on the bottom. So time could be in seconds, could be in minutes, could be in hours. And up the side, we're gonna do temperature. Now, uh, we'll go uh, in degrees Celsius. So go ahead. Um, whenever we do videos like this, as I write, you guys write. So at the end, what you are looking at should be the same thing that I am starting with. So at time zero, at temperature zero, that's where we're starting. So as time progresses um, for my ice water, let's just say... Uh, let's just start in a little bit. You can see this line. So uh, the water is going to be zero degrees Celsius, zero degrees Celsius, zero degrees Celsius. Oh man, I screwed that up, huh? So let's say that this is zero degrees Celsius here at time zero. It's a little different. See that? Zero degrees Celsius, zero degrees Celsius, and once all of the ice has melted, the water is gonna to start to increase in temperature. Increase in temperature, increase in temperature, increase in temperature. We'll go to about here. Your graph doesn't have to be exactly like mine, but it should have a plateau and then slowly increase. Then what happens after our water gets to 100 degrees Celsius? What's our water gonna do at 100 degrees Celsius? Right, so we're gonna boil, 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 boil. Woo, getting hot. Boil, 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 and our water has boiled away. Once the water is boiled away, what are we left with? So now that steam, it's gone, right? It's gone into the air. Um, but if we were to keep heating that steam up, we would have a continual increase here. So we're gonna go back and we're gonna label some stuff. Uh, in addition to that, you can see how I started here. It's kind of in a little bit. I wanted to leave some room here. So if I am less than zero degrees Celsius for water, what state of matter would I be in? So if I was colder than zero degrees Celsius, what would that be? So at the end, your graph should look pretty
pretty much like this. You have two plateaus and you have some areas of increasing temperature. We have two temperatures labeled, zero degrees Celsius for the first plateau, 100 degrees Celsius for the second plateau. Let's talk a little bit about what we have going on. So here we have ice. Uh, what state of matter is that? Good, solid. This next increase, we have water in its liquid form. And the last increase would be steam, which would be in its gaseous form. The plateaus are interesting. So on these plateaus, you would have melting. And the opposite of melting is what? That's going on on this plateau. On this plateau, we'd be going from liquid to a gas. How does that happen? We have to have boiling. And the opposite of boiling is, uh, actually it's on the outside of this glass, right? It's all wet. Where'd that water come from? What is that called? So opposite of boiling is condensation. Cool. All right, so we're six minutes in. I'm just, just give me uh, one more minute here. So when we're looking at states of matter, um, as you go from solid to a liquid to a gas, you need to know what's happening with our states of matter. Uh, in addition to that, as we go from solids, liquids to gases, I want you guys to know what is happening to the actual particles. So real quick, just let's draw six circles. They're all real close to each other. This is solid, right? When you are looking at liquid water, uh, we get less of a rigid structure. So it's have those same six circles but they're kind of able to maneuver around and flow uh, cool and in steam same six particles uh, but they are really spread apart and flying kind of all over the place now as we go from a solid to a liquid to a gas Think about what has to happen to go and make these different diagrams. You know, they are spreading apart. Your particles are moving more and more and more. So the attractive forces between your particles, they're actually breaking. Those are called intermolecular forces. So your intermolecular forces are breaking. And as you go vice versa, so if we were to cool something down, those particles are getting closer and closer together and we are forming those intermolecular attractions. Um, and different things have different amounts of attractions. We know that water, you know, water is a liquid most of the time um, in our lives, you know, when we see it. But something like carbon dioxide, it's always a gas at room temperature. So why is that? Well, it has to do with that idea of intermolecular forces. Water really likes each other, um, but carbon dioxide could really care less about each other. So water wants to stick together, liquid at room temperature. Carbon dioxide doesn't, so it's a gas at room temperature. So we have these different phase diagrams. Um, they all have the same general pattern, maybe not uh, with all this spilt water on it, uh, but they have the same general pattern. and. Um, we can tell some different information about it. So the follow-up activity for this is on the flip side of this graph paper. Uh, looks like this. This is just a generic phase diagram. The one on the back was for water. This is just generic. So if you're just gonna read through this with what we talked about uh, and fill in the blanks with these words and then uh, answer this bottom question. If you guys have additional time today, uh, please take that time to double check your density homework from yesterday. Take that time to uh, work through your new vocabulary. Take that time to make sure that your density lab is good to go for tomorrow. Uh, hope you guys have a great day. Thank you.